Hi everyone and welcome to NameHero.com. In today's video tutorial, I want to talk about how to filter your email forwards. Um, so if you're a lot of our customers, they like to forward their emails to their Gmail, to their Yahoo, or to whoever their email service provider is. Now the problem we run into when you do this is if you get spam emails, you're actually forwarding that spam as well to Gmail, to Microsoft, to whoever, and then this can inadvertently think that you're actually spamming them, and then they can actually block your emails. So you don't want that to happen, and we're actually seeing this um, quite frequently right now inside of our support desk. So I wanna explain in this video on how to actually filter that forwarded email, and then I'm also gonna do more videos on actually how to add your Name Hero email account, or the email account to your hosting package to your Gmail, and then other providers they also to work um, in a similar fashion. Now, your other option is, the third option is to actually sign up um, with G Suite. And so G Suite is Google's, um, uh, that gives you the ability to actually have Gmail on your domain. Now, years ago, this was actually a free service and I loved it. I used it on every single domain that I had because basically you could use, for example, all emails from at namehero.com would be to and from at namehero, but it actually used Gmail. So we'd actually have a Gmail interface um, to use that and it was free. Well, nowadays they actually charge $5 a month per user. So a lot of people, you know, they don't want to pay the $5 per user. So they end up just forwarding their email to Gmail. Now, again, you can do that. But the problem is, is if you're getting a lot of spam, then Gmail, they think that you're actually spamming them. And then they start to place the IP address on, on what's called an RBL, um, which is a blacklist. And that means that all the mail that comes in starts to get rejected. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to forter how to filter that forwarded email. And then my other videos, I'll, I'll get, go over some other options that you have. So if you want to follow along with me, right now I'm on the main page of Name Hero, but I'm just going to hover over account and go to log in. And I'm actually actually logged in already in this um, window, so I'm going to go over here. And I need to go into cPanel to set this up. And again, this is very easy to do. Everything's done right inside of cPanel. So I want to first navigate to my hosting package. So I'm going to click on Cloud Web Hosting here. And today I'm going to be using a starter cloud package, or I'm sorry, a plus cloud package for keydiets.com. This is our basic hosting. Now, if you're a reseller or if you're a VPS hosting customer, then you need to do this inside of the cPanel panel for whatever user it is. So um, as you know, if you're reselling or if you have a VPS, you can create unlimited cPanel accounts. So you actually need to log into the cPanel of whatever user you're trying to set up. So for mine, for this basic hosting package, I'm just going to go right in. I just have one cPanel. So I'm um, under actions here. I'm going to click on log in to cPanel. And so that brings up cPanel here. And so inside of here, there is a piece of software called Apache Spam Assassin. And it's not labeled like that anymore. But um, so we're going to talk about what it's labeled as. Um, this is a, a free piece of software that's been included in cPanel for many, many years. And the project has absolutely been amazing because the development of this has went on and on and on over the years. It's probably one of the um, longest running um, spam, pro spam protection programs or pieces of software out there. And nowadays, even a lot of these big providers, uh, Google included, Microsoft, um, they use technology and information from Spam Assassin to help evaluate emails as they come in. I actually attended a talk in um, Houston at the cPanel conference um, this last year that talked a lot about that and the efficiency of Spam Assassin. So it's really good stuff. And if you're not using it, um, the purpose of this video is to get you using it. So if you just type in email here, you're going to get lots of um, different um, options here. And what we're looking for, I'm just going to type in spam. So it just goes to here, spam filters. So it's under email, but it's spam filters. And um, it used to be called Apache Spam Assassin right here. But again, they've tried to make it simpler, I guess. So it's just spam filters. So I'm going to click on it. And you can see manage the settings for spam filters powered by Apache Spam Assassin for your email accounts. Identify unsolicited bulk email, more commonly known as spam, and send it to a separate folder or automatically delete it from your email account. And of course, they do have tons and tons of documentation. Um, and again, it's funny because I thought I thought many years ago that people would lose interest in the Spam Assassin, Assassin project and it would end up being one of those things that all too often goes defunct, but that's not the case. It's really good stuff. So um, you can see here the default setting is to process new emails and mark them as spam. So it's automatically enabled and it's automatically marked suspicious emails as spam. 
And, um, and so basically if you get what it considers to be a spam email, it will say spam in the actual subject of the email. And this is to help protect you. So you're not clicking on phishing emails or, or garbage email and you can quickly identify it. Um, but the problem if you're forwarding with this is it's actually still forwarding to your other provider. So Name Hero still kind of acts like a buffer. So for my example, I'm using keydiets.com. So if I want to forward, say, Ryan at keydiets.com over to my Gmail, then basically when someone sends an email to Ryan at keydiets.com, it's processed by the Name Hero server. It's processed by the hosting package. But then once it gets to Name Hero, it says, okay, well, this user wants it to forward. So then it forwards it to the Gmail. Now, again, the problem lies is if spam's coming to Ryan at keydiets.com, to Google, it looks like that Ryan at keydiets is actually spamming its servers. So that's why it puts it on an RBL or starts to block emails, and then you start to have a lot of different problems. So by using um, Apache Spam Assassin, we can actually get rid of those spam emails and not send them over to um, Gmail. Now, again, just by marking them as spam, that's still going to send them. So, I mean, you can set up filters on Gmail to actually, you know, delete that email or get rid of it, but it's actually not going to eliminate it from hitting their server. So there's a couple options here. One, we can move the spam to a separate folder, which is called your spam box. And then the second option is to automatically delete new spam. Now, me personally, when I have an account that's getting a lot of spam, and you know, if you don't get spam, then don't worry about it. But if you do, which lots, lots of us do, then you need to worry about it. <clears throat> so what I like to do is I like to just to delete it because if you're using a spam box, this thing will fill up very, very quickly. And so you can go into configure settings here, and basically it uses a score. And the score by default is five. So let's just click and talk about the score. So five is the default, and you can toggle this to go to one, four, five, eight, or ten, or custom. So you can see a one is very aggressive. It has many false positives, meaning it's not 100%. It's going to identify email that's not spam as spam. Um, four says it's recommended for well-tested servers, five being the default, um, eight recommended for internet service providers, and 10 is passive, only very obvious spam. So starting at five is really a good starting point, you know, just kind of the default um, filter. If you still get a lot, then you can um, you can go to four. And then if you still get a ton, you can go to one. But again, you're probably going to lose some email. So if we're using a spam box, then we can, you know, kind of safely do this because it's still going to go to the spam box. But again, the problem is with this is it will fill up very quickly and it will eat up a lot of the disk space on your account. So me personally, I've always used the automatically delete spam. And again, once this is enabled, when that spam hits, it's automatically going to just remove it, get rid of it. Um, because for me, I absolutely hate spam. I don't want to worry about it. And so if anything comes in that the system even thinks it is, then I just want to get rid of it in the first place. And it saves me from having to check a spam box. Because again, I hate doing that. You know, I hate when people say, well, check your spam box. Well, if it didn't look like spam, it wouldn't have went there in the first place. So <clears throat> this is really up to you. If it was me, I would probably just enable the delete auto spam, configure auto delete settings, and work with this number here. Work with what the threshold is to make sure you're getting all your legitimate emails. Again, most of the time, a five, the default of five, it's not going to get rid of your legitimate email. You know, if your business um, colleagues or if your friends or family or, you know, new order notifications, those are most likely going to get through unless there's something else going on. Um, but again, the lower you get, the more aggressive it is. Um, this is the same type of technology we use on our Who Is Protection service at Name Hero. So we actually filter spam um, using our Whois protection. And, and we'll go a little bit more aggressive than five even because if you know anything about Whois databases, you know there's a ton of spam. So those we kind of go even down to three, which is fairly, fairly, very aggressive. But um, for yours, I would just set it keep it at default here and then you can kind of monitor to make sure you're getting the right emails now if you start getting you know people that say well i sent you an email it didn't come through what happened to it then you can check into it also inside of cpanel here let me go back to the main page there is a feature called track delivery and you can just click it here and this will show you what's happening 
Um, <clears throat> this is a new account. I just set it up before this video, so I don't have any to show you right now. But this will actually show you what the spam scores are, and you can actually see where they're from. So this way you can kind of see as the logs come in. This way you always have a way to track it. So you know, if emails are getting deleted, you can actually look in this track delivery, and you can find out what exactly is happening to them. And this also allows you to tweak that spam score. In addition, if you see legitimate emails that are getting a spam score of five that are getting rejected, then you, you of course want to change that a little bit or actually whitelist the address. So you can do that. And I'll explain that here in just a second too. So this is what I like to do is set this up, set my, um, whoops, my spam score, set my auto delete settings to where um, I'm on auto delete. Now you can see here, we recommend that you use spam box instead of auto delete because it allows you to recover messages. Again, it's up to you. Me, you know, I, I want um, real emails. I don't want spam. I don't want to check a spam box. You, your situation could be different. So it's up, completely up to you how you want to do it. Um, again, it's personal preference. I, me, I am not good at logging in and checking spam boxes and keep them cleared out. Then it can eat up your web space and then it's a whole bunch of other problems. So that's what I like to do. That's what I like to use. Um, <clears throat> they've gotten additional configurations for advanced users. If you go down here, whitelist emails always allowed, you have zero whitelist items. So if you need to whitelist an, an email provider, um, you can do that inside of here. So for example, if we wanted to whitelist um, name hero, we could use this. We could use a asterisk in these directions if you click this I or right here. So this would be anyone, anyone that matches, this is a wildcard, so anything at namehero.com. So Ryan at Name Hero, support at Name Hero, um, services at Name Hero, whatever, it's going to automatically whitelist it. So we click update whitelist, and there we go. We're good. So now anyone that sends me an email from Name Hero, they're whitelisted, they're automatically going to be sent right to me. And so I recommend doing this um, because this will make sure you're going to get the emails that you want to get. Um, you know, and, not, and there's not a lot of spam that comes from actual Gmail users. So maybe you'd want to do at gmail.com. And again, this is your own personal preference, you know, because you're going to be whitelisting all Gmail. So if someone's doing some nasty stuff, maybe it gets through. <clears throat> but it's really up to you on how you want to do this. So, um, you know, using company names like this is always a good idea. Um, if you're like my wife and she gets coupons and, and notices from some of her favorite um, shopping places, you might want to add them as well. So, for example, Target's one. So at um, Target.com, you could add that there to make sure you're getting all the legitimate ones. Because sometimes when big stores send out lots of emails, um, they could get inadvertently flagged as spam. So adding them um, always, you know, just adding those gives you that peace of mind to know it's going to come through there. And in the same way we whitelisted, we can always black list too. So for example, at Name Hero, we get a lot of spam from qq.com. So you can add that qq.com. Um, this is an internet service provider in China. If you don't know anyone there and you don't get an email from anyone, it might be a good idea just to add them to the blacklist. So no matter what, if the email, if it doesn't even hit the spam um, test and, and still, it's just going to block it no matter what. So, you know, use the blacklist carefully if you're going to use that. Um, but it will make sure that, you know, nothing's ever sent to you from that domain. And again, I'm using a wildcard here. I could always be exact. So, you know, if I wanted to block my own emails, which I'm not going to, but, you know, if you had someone that was annoying you, maybe an ex-partner or something like that. Um, you could always enter an email address here and this will make sure you never get those emails. So again, it's just a way to block, completely block an email address or an email or a complete email domain. I'm going to close out of that though because I don't want to block my own, own emails to this. Um, but that's how it works. As you can see, it's very simple. You know, it's, a, it's defining what your, your um, score is and then how to handle that. Um, you know, you can obviously turn this off, which will disable um, spam assassin, but you don't want to do that because you want to have it on there. You know, by default, it's enabled and it marks the emails as spam. But so you want to keep that on and then you want to define your threshold. Five is a good starting point. If you're getting a lot of spam and you want to go a little bit more um, conservative, you could go down to four recommended for well-tested servers. Um, but, you know, this will at least get you started. And then from there, you, you decide, okay, I've got it enabled. Uh, I've got my threshold, which is by default. But now how do I want to handle it? Because default, they just come to you still. And again, if you're forwarding, this is bad because it can give you a bad reputation with your other email provider. So if it's me, I automatically delete them. 
make sure my threshold is five, and then I go from there. I go down here and I whitelist my important emails. If I need to blacklist, I blacklist them. And then I monitor this whole track delivery. So as emails are coming in, I can see what is being done with them. You know, are the ones being forwarded that need to be forwarded, or am I losing emails? <clears throat> Now, just for your reference, the forwards are set up inside of here. So if I wanted to set up a forward, um, I would just add it inside of here, add forward. So, and again, this is important too. Let's, let's back up just one second. So if we're talking about forwards, we can do a domain forward. So that means all the email for my example, keydiets.com will go to this Gmail. Well, that's also kind of bad because sometimes spammers will just start picking whatever at keydiets.com and they'll just target all of them. So, you know, the problem with that you run into is, again, you're getting a lot of spam and a lot of emails not meant for you. So I like to set up individual forwards, you know, never just a catch-all. And because I know if I'm giving you a unique email out, I'm getting it from a legit person. You know, trying to do a catch-all, um, I don't like to do that. And because of that too, I like to set a default address. And um, so all unrouted mail, it automatically will fail. If, you know, so at keydiets.com, if someone sends it to John at keydiets.com and there's no user named John, then it just fails. It says, hey, we sent your email back because the user you're trying to reach doesn't exist. That's smart and that's why that is default. And so, and that's also the same reason why it's not a good idea to forward all of your email um, to you know a provider. So again, you want to do individual ones. So for example, if I wanted to do Ryan at keydiets.com, then I could forward it to my Gmail. So just say Ryan123 at gmail.com. So see, then we could forward it here, Ryan at keydiets.com. We do it here. Um, these advanced options you're not going to need. And I could click add my forward. And so now when someone emails me, Ryan at keydiets.com, it will forward to my Gmail, but it's going to have that whole spam buffer in place. So I'm not going to have to worry about getting blacklistings and stuff like that. Because again, that's where we run into um, a lot of problems. And then you know, once you're on a blacklist, then it takes a while to get off of it. Then all your emails rejected to Gmail and then customers get really angry, you know, when that happens. So, and with, with good reason, you know, I can completely understand, you know, why they would. But that's how it's done. Um, if you're forwarding emails and you're not doing that and you are getting a lot of spam, you know, please check this tutorial out. Um, in my other tutorial, I'm going to show you how to actually add, in my case, keydiets.com email to my Gmail. So I could still use the Gmail interface to receive the email, but it's actually not going to forward to Gmail. It's actually just going to pull it directly. And so again, that provides another option without having the risk of um, getting blacklisted. So if you haven't already, you know, I, I really highly recommend subscribing to our YouTube channel because we do a lot of these videos and this way you'll um, know when a new one's coming out. And I'm um, also appreciate a thumbs up if you enjoyed this material, if it helped you out and, you know, feel free to share it around. Um, but thanks so much for watching. I hope this helps eliminate your spam and also increase your email delivery.